What comes to mind when you see this rocket model? It looks a lot like SpaceX's Dragon, doesn't it? Meet ZK-6, a new single-stage reusable rocket from a Chinese commercial space company. It's just one of many signs that China, the US's biggest space rival, is closely mirroring SpaceX's designs. But why? The truth is, while China and other nations lag at least six years behind SpaceX's reusable rocket technology, Elon Musk's company holds something priceless. Data. Decades of flight experience, engine testing, and reuse insights that no one else has. But here's the real question. Is copying enough? And how does Elon Musk respond to this blatant imitation? Stay tuned because in this episode of Tech Map, we will uncover the full story. In March 2019, SpaceX took a major step toward human spaceflight with the successful launch of Dragon's first uncrewed flight test, known as Demo-1. This mission validated the spacecraft's ability to dock autonomously with the International Space Station and return safely to Earth, paving the way for crewed missions. A little over a year later, in May 2020, SpaceX achieved another historic milestone with Demo-2 the first crewed flight of the Dragon spacecraft. This mission carried NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken to the ISSS, marking the first time in nearly a decade that astronauts had launched into orbit from U.S. soil. It was also the first crewed space flight in history operated by a private company. Demo 2 was a defining moment not only for SpaceX but for the global space industry. The launch captivated audiences worldwide, proving that commercial spaceflight had arrived in full force. Among the most watchful observers was China, the United States' biggest competitor in the modern space race. As SpaceX pushed the boundaries of private space exploration, China took note, accelerating its own efforts to develop comparable technologies and establish a dominant presence in space. Also in 2020, this country successfully tested new uncrewed spacecraft that bore a strong resemblance to SpaceX's Crew Dragon. That mission was an early step in China's grand plan to send astronauts to the moon. For the test flight, the spacecraft rode atop a Long March 5B, China's most powerful rocket at the time, soaring nearly 5,000 miles above Earth. The trial was reminiscent of NASA's initial Orion test flight in 2014, a crucial milestone in America's own lunar ambitions. Like Orion's debut, China's mission was deemed a success, further fueling speculation about how quickly the nation could close the gap in human spaceflight capabilities. Just a year later, or in 2021, a further step was announced. CAS Space a commercial spin-off from the Chinese Academy of Sciences CAS, revealed plans for a single-stage reusable rocket designed to carry up to seven passengers on a 10-minute suborbital journey beyond the Kármán line, the 100-kilometer, 62-mile boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Named ZK-6, this spacecraft stands 15 meters tall with a 3.35-meter diameter and features four windows. It is powered by five XY-1 engines, each with a thrust of 15 tons and is designed to be reused over 30 times. A glance at the ZK-6 reveals striking similarities to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, reinforcing the growing competition between the two nations. One of its most notable features is the use of grid fins near the top of the rocket to help steer its descent, a design element reminiscent of SpaceX's Falcon 9. However, instead of landing legs, the ZK-6 will be caught mid-air by an arm attached to the launch tower, a technique similar to the one SpaceX has proposed for its Starship Super Heavy Booster. Meanwhile, the crew capsule will return to Earth using three parachutes for a controlled landing. CAS Space's Space Tourism Vehicle was originally set to take its first crewed flight in 2025, but then delayed to 2028. Its tickets are expected to cost between 2 to 3 million yen, around $281,000 to $381,000, $421,000.
With this development, China is positioning itself as a serious player in the emerging commercial spaceflight industry, signaling a new phase in the global space race. These are not the first times Chinese rocket programs have emulated SpaceX, such as when Space Pioneer planned to develop a Falcon 9 clone. In 2023, the company announced a new round of funding for development of the Tianlong-3 rocket, comparable to the SpaceX Falcon 9. Tianlong-3, Sky Dragon 3, is a two-stage kerosene liquid oxygen rocket with a reusable first stage. The 71-meter-long rocket has a diameter of 3.8 meters. It has a takeoff mass of 590 tons and produces 770 tons of thrust. Tianlong-3 was by then the largest commercial rocket launched in China. It was expected to be nationally second only to the expendable Long March 5B, 25 tons, in terms of capacity to LEO. Space Pioneer states that the rocket will be capable of lifting 17 tons of payload to low Earth orbit, or 14 tons to 500 km Sun synchronous orbit. The firm originally planned to launch the Tianlong-3 rocket in June 2024, but an accident during a static fire test in June 2024 caused the rocket to crash. Previously, in 2022, Wang Xiaojun, president of China's Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, took the stage to showcase a concept for a two-stage methane-fueled launch system, one that looked all too familiar. The slides he presented left little to the imagination. The design bore a striking resemblance to SpaceX's Starship, from the sleek stainless steel structure to the general staging architecture. Of course, there are some key differences. CALT's version is built to haul around 20 tons to low Earth orbit, just a fraction of Starship's staggering 100-ton capacity. There are also distinctions in engine thrust generation, though the full technical details remain somewhat vague. Beijing's strategy is simple but undeniably effective. Rather than sinking years into original research, trial and error testing, and costly redesigns, they're opting for a faster route, reverse engineering SpaceX's best practices. It's a pragmatic approach. Why reinvent the wheel when you can just copy and refine it? At this point, China's launch industry is essentially lurking in SpaceX's shadow watching and waiting for the next breakthrough to borrow. When SpaceX proves a concept works, be it full reusability, methane-fueled engines, or tower-assisted landings, China swiftly moves to integrate similar technologies into its own designs. And the results speak for themselves. Just a decade ago, China's rockets were largely derivatives of old Soviet designs. Now, their space program is evolving at breakneck speed, rapidly closing the gap with NASA and SpaceX. With each new development from Elon Musk's team, the blueprint for China's next-generation space ambitions becomes clearer. Of course, copying is one thing, execution is another. Building a fully reusable rocket isn't just about mimicking the exterior design. It requires precision engineering, advanced materials, and years of rigorous testing. Whether China can match SpaceX's rapid innovation cycles remains to be seen. But one thing is certain, they're not slowing down. And with a Starship-style vehicle in the works and an ambitious lunar program taking shape, China is making it clear that they don't just want to keep up, they want to lead. Elon Musk's response to China's copycat approach a shrug and a smirk. Rather than worrying about intellectual property theft, Musk has long dismissed patents as bureaucratic obstacles. He believes true innovation isn't about locking ideas behind legal barriers, but about moving so fast that competitors, copycats included, can never catch up. During a tour of SpaceX's Starbase facility with TV host Jay Leno, Musk showcased the company's cutting-edge Raptor engines designed and built in-house in California. When asked about patents, he didn't mince words. You know, the problem is like patents are generally used as a blocking technique. Right. They're, they're, they're like using like landmines in warfare. They, they, they don't actually help advance things. They just stop others from following you. Um, and most, most patents are, are, are BS. Musk's stance isn't new. 
In a 2012 interview with Wired, he openly admitted that SpaceX holds essentially no patents, because in his words, publishing them would be like handing China a recipe book. Instead of relying on legal protections, SpaceX leans into rapid iteration. By the time competitors reverse engineer one breakthrough, the company is already on to the next. This philosophy extends beyond SpaceX. In 2014, Musk took an unprecedented step by opening Tesla's patents to the public, hoping to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles. He argued that patents often stifle progress rather than encourage it, calling them a sign of stagnation rather than innovation. At SpaceX, this approach is even more aggressive. Musk's strategy is simple. Innovate at a relentless pace. While China and other aerospace players may replicate SpaceX's hardware, keeping up with its rapid development cycle, ambitious vision, and execution speed is another challenge entirely. Copying blueprints is one thing. Keeping pace with a company that reinvents itself every few years? That's the real test. What do you think? Are patents a shield for innovation? Or just a roadblock? And can China ever truly rival SpaceX by following its footsteps? Let's hear your thoughts. However, after all, we can't say that China's space is weak. In fact, it is rapidly evolving into a formidable force in the global space race. At the heart of China's ambitions is the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, CASC, the country's primary space contractor, which is steadily working toward making China a leading space power. Wu Yansheng, CASC's chairman, recently outlined an ambitious roadmap that aligns with the strategic vision of President Xi Jinping, one centered on technological self-reliance and space dominance. The long-term goal? To establish China as one of the world's top aerospace powers by 2030 and a fully comprehensive space leader by 2045. CASC has made it clear that it aims to enhance China's ability to utilize space efficiently by upgrading infrastructure, improving in-orbit servicing capabilities, and advancing low-cost space transportation. However, China's ascent is not without challenges. Wu acknowledged the geopolitical hurdles, particularly the U.S.'s intensified competition, restrictions imposed by the Wolf Amendment, and trade blacklists targeting Chinese aerospace firms. He also pointed out that the U.S. is actively securing prime orbital slots, lunar landing sites, and radio frequencies, strategic resources essential for future space dominance. Despite these barriers, China remains focused on its milestones. A crude lunar landing is slated for before 2030, followed by the construction of the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, in the following decade. Unlike previous projects, China is open to international partnerships for the ILRS, though it will be developed separately from NASA's Artemis program. Further down the pipeline, China has set its sights on a Mars sample return mission within the next 10 to 15 years, an apparent delay from its initial 2031 target. The country is also planning deep space missions to the Heliopause, Jupiter, and Uranus alongside a major exoplanet hunting project, known as the Mian Project. While China may have started by observing and adapting existing technologies, it is now carving its own path in space exploration. With a strong political mandate, a rapidly expanding technological base, and an unwavering commitment to self-reliance, China is not just following in the footsteps of space pioneers, it is actively shaping the future of spaceflight on its own terms.